Hello, I'm Stuart Bloor. I'm on the Middle Severn in Shropshire. It's a beautiful afternoon. I'm having a few hours with a cage feeder. First couple of casts plagued by minnows, but third time lucky, as they say. And there you go, a nice little gudgeon. Fantastic fish, aren't they? And my second species landed of the session. Let me put this close to the camera. It's very sunny. I can't see the screen. Hopefully you can see this though. It's a tiny, tiny little chub. Well, I'm going to put this one back as I am with all the others, of course, and hopefully one day I'll return in the future and it'll be about six pound. And I've just caught my third fish of the session. I've been here very long and it's another gudgeon. Great, aren't they? I do generally target bigger fish whenever I'm out there, but it might be bigger gudgeon, bigger rough or whatever. But regardless, I'll tell you what, I just love to catch fish. I've just moved the camcorder around so you're looking at it now from another angle. Downstream, just 10 yards or so, overhanging willows. It's not a particularly deep section here, but what I'm after, always go out with a, a target species in mind. And today that's perch. So I'm fishing pegs that I haven't fished before for any species, certainly not for perch. So I'm going to see how this one goes. If I catch those small gudgeon, chub, etc., that I've been having so far, that's fine. I just love to be out water's edge anyway. But always at the back of my mind, I'm searching out new swims, new venues, new spots to see if I can catch me a nice big River Severn perch. Well, I just switched to a worm and I've looked into something a little bit better. And do you know what? I think it could possibly be a perch. Yeah, I think it is. It, the water's quite clear today. And I'm going to reach for my net, which is very conveniently placed to the left of me. And I'm about to bank a nice perch. Isn't it great when a, a plank comes together? It will be when it's in the net. And indeed, that's where it is now. And there it is, fantastic. Not a monster, but they don't have to be, do they, to be beautiful. But I'll tell you what, it's certainly a decent fish. And if this is the smallest of the ones that I could catch me here today, I'll tell you what, I'll be happy. But if this is the largest, I'll still be happy. That fish has now gone back. I'm a happy camper. Who knows what the swim will yield. But it's one of the reasons why I am fairly secretive when it comes to angling, I'm forever getting people contacting me saying, where was it? Where was the swim? And, and all the minute details such as that. And I don't like to give too much away. It's not about being selfish, far from it, but we do live in the world of the internet where there's a lot more information out there that people can access. And I get five figure views on my blog during the course of a month. So imagine if I've put that hard work in, if you like, I've found a swim and then I think to myself, I'm gonna try that. Like my recent brook, loads of people have been guessing that. Not that I've been inviting guesses, by the way, but people have been guessing where it is and, and no one's actually guessed it right yet. And if they did, I wouldn't tell them <laughs> anyway. But why should people put all that hard work in to then just tell everybody, here it is, go and fish it. Certainly in the case of that brook that I fished recently, it would certainly kill the place off. But apart from that, if you put the hard work in, you find swims, you find spots, you find stretches. Well, there's no harm in keeping that information to yourself. It's not selfish as some people like to think it is. Actually, you could say the reverse is true and it's selfish to expect someone to do all the hard work for you and then after they fish 99 swims that didn't work put you in the one that did well as far as I'm concerned I don't get involved in any of the the issues I've seen anglers tear into others who've been asking questions about swims and locations I don't do that in fact I always feel bad when I say to people sorry bro don't give that sort of information out for obvious reasons it is an obvious reason when you think about it in today's day and age. So my advice to anyone is, you do the groundwork, you put a lot of time and effort in, don't feel obliged to tell the world where you've found that secret little spot, that special little place that you've discovered. I was right about perch being out there, except this one. 
is probably the opposite end of the scale. But having said that, all fish, and this is why I'm kneeling down, all fish, and holding it quite carefully as well, though <laughs> it's a very lively one, all fish are very, very welcome indeed. Let's get this one back. After lots and lots of smaller fish again, I'm now into something a little bit more decent. And what is it though? Actually, it's not as big as I thought it might be. It's a little perch, fighting against the current. Sometimes it gives you the impression that they are bigger than they actually are. Anyway, at least I've caught something. And there it is. I'll show you my rig before it gets too dark. I'm ready to pack away soon. Six pound line. I've got a shot nipped on there, about eight inches, size 10, Drennan Super Specialist hook, fishing a worm. And then I've got a cage feeder. It's a 20 gram feeder. I haven't even got a bead on this time. So simplicity in itself, but it works. And that's the important thing. Another nice, plump little perch. The video comes to an end now. I've got lots of fishing planned this week ahead. So why not check out the written blog that accompanies the video. And as always, you can find that in the comments box here on YouTube. Out and about yourself, tight lines. Check out my website. I've been doing a weekly blog every Saturday without fail since July the 5th, 2003. Lots of stuff in there. People say it's dedication, it's commitment. Well, I suppose it is. But above all, it's a labor of love. See you next week.